Good morning, everyone. It's Lazy Sunday, and I am planning to have a very lazy day. I always plan to have lazy days with lots of stuff to do, or want to do, or get into. <laughs> <coughs> Still a lazy day. Yes? Yeah. Because I choose to do everything. Get to choose to do everything. Or not to do it. Yes? Now. Uh, had a wonderful day yesterday. The drives were great. On the way home, it was a little touch and going with the little one. But all worked out too. Everybody stay patient. <laughs> yes. uh, interesting. Uh, we uh, on the way there. There's there's several ways to uh, go routes to take to the farm and back. It's about a three hour drive. And we decided that, uh, because it was a little bit faster, but it was on the yeah, interstate, yeah, to take I-75 most of the way. And, uh, and we had already discussed in the car, I wanted to go to United Grocery. That's that grocery store that just has fabulous prices, fabulous products to me. Okay. And... Uh, a lot of things end up there because people don't want to buy it otherwise. And, and it's a lot of things are organic, a little bit different, this and that. Not just, but. And they have a great meat section with great prices. And I've been so shocked here. <laughs> My gosh, how do people survive here with, yeah, I mean, though, I even here in the neighborhood, I uh, have, <laughs> I'm already foraging, you know, I'm foraging, uh, and gathering <laughs> in the city, kind of. Finding all kinds of wonderful things. To eat, yes. Yeah. And, uh, but really, when it comes down to it, things are so expensive here. I cannot see with, on how the econ economy supposedly is, that people can afford to buy all that extra comfort food stuff. Or then they're not actually eating proper food. It's got to be one or the other, or it's all just a hype. It can't be both, right? Anyway, so we decided that, and I really encouraged and said, look, if, if for nothing else, let's go and get a good supply of meat. That will last us for a while, and we're going to be paying a fraction off. At least, I'd say, two-thirds less than what we would be paying here in any store. And so uh, we said, okay, okay, let's do that. So I was dropped off at the farm. They went on to the reunion. And, uh, oh, Danny had a great time. Uh, my, uh, my husband also showed up. And uh, they went, uh, he, first he took me for a four-wheel ride, which was really, really, uh, really nice, actually. And I was amazed that I actually lasted on that four-wheeler. Yes, oh, my legs must be doing a little better. And... Uh, he showed me where they buried Bo, our, our old horse, and it's a beautiful spot. Oh, my gosh. It's like, it's a beautiful spot. He says, you know, I'm thinking of putting a bench there, and we're going to put some grass seed down. It's a pretty big area now. That's pretty pretty bare. Right underneath a beautiful pine tree. And, uh, and I said, oh, that would be great, you know, just to come back here and be able to sit down somewhere for a while, sit with our old horse for a little bit, you know. Anyway, and... Uh, we had a really, really nice time taking that four-wheel drive. I have, I have not been on a four-wheeler in years. And him knowing that, man, you do any kind of weird stunt or something or think you need to show off, I'm off that four-wheeler and I'll be walking. And, uh, and he, he took it nice and slow. And uh, he talked the whole time, which then he needs to drive slow anyway. And I'm going, yeah, 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 I'm listening. You keep talking, you know, <laughs> drive nice and slow. <laughs> Which also then didn't jar my legs too bad. And we got home and there was my granddaughter uh, looking a little bit bored. You know, and I said, hey, do you want to go with Papa for, for a, with your grandpa for a four-wheel ride? You know, and he, they go, and he taught her, you know, she's almost 12, 
to ride a four-wheeler and she loved it she got so hooked she all she wanted to do after that is just ride the four-wheeler so her auntie went with her yes yeah as well you know after a couple of rides with grandpa and anyway everybody had a wonderful time and uh so they came back from the reunion and we ended up um leaving a little later than we wanted to everybody needed a nap you know it's another long that's it that's for my uh son-in-law it's like a six that was a six hour drive right round trip so uh they, everybody needed a nap and then we left went to united grocery <laughs> he said after he paid he said man he says i just paid a third of what i would have paid uh up here right, for the meat and he got good meat uh, and he got his steaks he the last time we went to the store he looked at the steaks they were so expensive he just put them back he says we can't afford this right now or he was just not willing to spend that much money on just himself he's the one that likes the steaks here the rest of us we don't have to have steaks so since they're so expensive and since men really do need red meat yes they do yeah, to stay strong and healthy, yeah. Uh, he decided, well, I'm not going to just do that. He's a selfless man, yeah, yeah. It comes to his whole family, what's more important, himself or, yeah, mm, just saying. But there, he says, oh my gosh, he says, I can, yes, I said, go right to it. He bought, and even then, he was very conservative, yeah, yes. But anyway, so, so he was really happy, yeah, yeah. And today we're gonna yeah, okay we're there. Uh, we were done. Get back in the car, start driving, and we had already decided on the way down that we were gonna take the other route back home, kind of the backwoods route. Yes, because we were already going since we went to United Grocery, we, we were or we're already kind of on our way on that route, and so we started driving. Suddenly he's he says, "Hey guys, guess what?" Uh, he had gotten a, a text from his dad uh, saying, hey, guys, you guys are not on I-75, are you? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they just had, uh, they're looking for a guy um, who's still at large, armed, and has just shot three people dead on, uh, on I-75, and it's completely closed down. They're still hunting for him, and it, it's completely closed down. Uh, uh, both sides have been shut down and, and it's like already backing up to who knows where it's just I hope you guys are not stuck in that traffic we weren't we were not and of course you know my immediate yeah, first prayer for the people that got killed and the people involved in all that now and and dear me, I thought, oh my gosh, all them people now, and and you know, not being able to get home, in a, on a Saturday evening, and here we are. No, nope, no, nope, we're good. We're not anywhere near that, and we're gonna get home just as planned. Coincidence? Well, just saying. Anyway. All one can say is, thank God. Oh, for just us, right? Where are probably other people who also decided to go a different route or whatever. Mm. All I can say is, when a true connection is established from the heart, to the mind, to our original mind, and tend to God's heart. It does make a difference, people. Sadly, whatever others out there choose to do, like this gunman shooting three people on the interstate, you know, for who knows what reason, maybe we'll find out today, maybe not. Does it matter? That's, that's just a consequence, again, of what? So much buildup over so many thousands of years of humans living together and treating each other in one way or the other. Then suddenly there is this product, right? cause and effect, 
some of this is then there is this product of a human being who's doing it has escalated to the point of doing something like that and then yeah, the the greater side effects even on 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 how it's affecting so many other people yes so of course uh, if he gets caught, we don't, I don't know if they, he got caught or not yet. Um, uh, if, is he alive or dead? Yeah, but, of course, that human being needs prayers too. Yes? Yeah. I was just I was told by someone, said, God gave us the right to defend ourselves. Blah, 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 this and that. Said, yeah. 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 True defense. True defense. True defense is always love. So, there is that. So, let's get going here. Ugh. That's some more, as somebody called my videos, humanistic BS. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's have some more of that. <laughs> Gotta love him, too. Yes? Done. Okay. I told him that. I have 830 videos of that. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> when in a way, in this way, like I said, we came that one way, everything was fine. We decided, we already had decided, we're not going that way, Mac. Then I also believe that I must be doing something right. Yes, I must be doing something right for myself and everyone else around that. So, if this is humanistic BS to some, well, okay. I can't be mad at that because in my own life, I know it's not. I know that in my surroundings, I am protecting my family, my children, my grandchildren. And... With these things that keep happening in, in the way they are, for the better for me, us, then I also know that I am on the right path. I'm being encouraged by my Heavenly Parent and Spirit Father. Keep going. Keep teaching. Yeah, you see? So, I have... The validation, the stamp, is coming from somewhere else. So someone saying that these videos are humanistic BS. Well, okay. I can't. That's up to the people to decide. It's true. They can choose to do so. But the greater love for everything that I do comes from somewhere else. And that's always greater, more beautiful, more amazing hmm? than when someone tries to degrade you. Right? And you, you got you got to see where I'm just, oh, that doesn't, I'm not going to be affected by that. Why would I? Right? Yes. I give that as an example, too. Because so easily, right? Ten things that are great, going great, this, that, and da, da, da. And people are go, oh, you're so, oh, this is wonderful. This, then there's one person that will come and say something degrading. And that seems to often have more of an effect on a person than the ten great things that happened before. Suddenly those ten great things mean nothing anymore. Just because of one person being negative. pray for that one person even more so than being thankful and grateful for the ten great things that otherwise that happen yes because even here how often do I say if you feel like there's some negative spirit or something around right yes it's a cry for help this person saying that that's a cry 
cry for help. Yes, I'm going to have to love him even more. Right? Yes? No? There. Okay. Done. Oh, two good things this morning. Oh, everything kind of goes together. Oh, wonderful. All right, the victory of Judaism. <clears throat> Super chapter 5. And we're in the second book of Maccabees. 8. The death of the persecutor and purification of the temple. All right. Let's keep right on going. On that route. Oh, I didn't get my new glasses yet. Judas, otherwise known, Judas Maccabees and the Resistance. Oh, wait a minute. Judas Maccabees. Oh, I'm so confused again. Another Judas, or is this the... Well, I think that's the same one. Otherwise known as Maccabeus and his companions. Oh, yeah, that's right made their way secretly among the villages, rallying their fellow countrymen. They recruited those who remained loyal to Judaism and assembled about 6,000. They called on the Lord to have regard for the people oppressed on all sides, to take pity on the temple profaned by the godless, to have mercy on the city now being destroyed and leveled to the ground, to hear the blood of the victims that cried aloud to him, to remember to the criminal slaughter of innocent babies and to avenge the blasphemies perpetrated against his name. As soon as Macbeth had an organized force, he at once proved invincible to the foreigners, the Lord's anger having turned into compassion, making surprise attacks on towns and villages. Well, isn't he doing the same thing now again as they did too? If you're attacking towns and villages, who are you attacking? Another army? Or the common people? Hey, does all this make sense? He fired them. He captured favorable positions and inflicted very heavy losses on the enemy. Which enemy exactly? Generally availing himself of the cover of night for such enterprises. The fame of his valor spread far and wide. Oh, yeah? So here again, he had to go around and find people who still stuck to Judaism and wanted to be a part of... Okay, so it had to be able-bodied men. 6,000. You guys remember when God set up the tribes yeah, in, uh, much farther back during the time of Moses on how many tens, and tens of thousands of soldiers, able-bodied men there were in the front and in the back and I don't know where? 6,000. And this is much later. The Israelites should already have multiplied right? a lot. 6,000. That's all he had. That's pitiful, don't you think? Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Campaign of Nicanor and Gorgias. I can't, you know, the, the, the night actions, this night again. It doesn't give us enough to, okay, who did they actually attack? They just went to the officials' homes and took over there and left everybody alone. It doesn't say so. It's so detailed in other ways. So many of all of this, these stories, so detailed. And then here we're getting what exactly? Yeah, see? What, they don't want to tell us the truth? That they ended up doing exactly the same thing as what the other one, the enemy, was doing to them? Not just asking. Oh, I know. Where's the whole story? Campaign of Nicanor and Gorgias. When Philip saw Judas was making steady progress and winning more and more frequent successes, he wrote to Ptolemy, the general officer commanding Coelus Syria and Phoenicia, asking for reinforcements in the royal interest. Why? Didn't he already have a way bigger army? I said, what happened to that one? Ptolemy, it's just 6,000 men. Ptolemy chose Nicanor, son of Patral Patroclus, Patroclus, one of the king's first friends, and sent him without delay at the head of an international force, at least 20,000 men to exterminate the entire Jewish race. <sighs> and Judas Maccabeus didn't think that that was going to happen. 
So beforehand, the whole Judea, Judea was invaded by someone who they even killed and then put new laws in place, yeah, and then you guys can't do that anymore, yeah, and killed people for this or that, and I don't know what, nasty slaughter of people, women, children, babies. And and then here's Judas Maccabeus and, uh, you know, counterattack. And here now, another counterattack from the other side. The consequence to go and eradicate the whole Jewish race. Was Judas not thinking that that might happen? This is senseless. This is totally senseless. As his associate, he appointed Gorgias, a professional general of wide military experience, Nicanor, for his part proposed by the sale of Jewish prisoners of war to raise the 2,000 talents of tribute money owed by the king to the Romans. He lost no time in sending the seaboard towns an invitation to come and buy Jewish manpower, promising delivery of 90 heads for one talent. But he did not reckon on the judgment from the Almighty that was soon to overtake him. Ooh. And so here we have, uh, okay, you know what? Not even. Uh, oh my gosh. When news reached Judas of Nicanor's ad advance, he warned his men of the enemy's approach. Whereupon the cowardly ones and those who lacked confidence in the justice of God took to their heels and ran away. How many didn't run away? So how many stayed? The rest sold all their remaining possessions at the same time praying to Lord, to the Lord, praying, at the same time praying the Lord to deliver them from the godless Nicanor who had sold them even in advance of any encounter. If not for their own sakes, then at least out of consideration for the covenants made with their ancestors and because they themselves bore his sacred and majestic name. Here they are. Okay, this is, sounds familiar from a story from before. And I say, we're, we're, travel, we're traveling back in time a little bit here. Maccabeus marshaled his men, who numbered about 6,000. I thought there were some of them that ran away, so not, not too many. And exhorted them, to, exhorted them not to be dismayed at the enemy or discouraged at the vast horde of Gentiles wickedly advancing against them, but to fight bravely keeping before their eyes the outrage committed by them against the holy place and the infamous and scornful treatment inflicted on the city, not to mention the destruction of their traditional way of life. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, then the, the defense makes sense, doesn't it? They may put their trust in their weapons and their, ex they may put their trust in their weapons and their exploits, he said, but our confidence is in Almighty God who is able with a single nod to overthrow both those marching on us and the whole world with them. Well, if that's the case, and it's all up to God, then why didn't he stop them beforehand as well? Oh, that's because they had to atone for their sins. Yeah, right. This doesn't make any sense. Does not make a whole... He reminded them of the occasions on which their ancestors had received help. That might, that time when under Sennacherib, 185,000 men had perished. Wow, yeah. Did you just hear that number? 185,000 men. That time in Babylonia, when in a battle with the Galatians, the Jewish combatants numbered only 8,000. With 4,000 Macedonians, yet when the Macedonians were hard-pressed, the 8,000 had destroyed 120,000 thanks to the help they had received from heaven and had taken great booty as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't believe that. Having, a, having so roused their courage by these words that they were ready to die for the loss. Oh, that could have been up in the mountains. Well, okay, they, I've already talked about that. Since I grew up in Switzerland... It was very difficult in the old older times. Yeah, yeah, not not now. As I said, now what what do we got now? You know, when it comes to war weapons, you don't need to go into a country, <laughs> just destroy it otherwise. 
<coughs> but before all the airplanes and the bombs and the this and that, you couldn't invade Switzerland. It's not possible. No matter how much of an army you had. Okay, because of the mountains. Having so roused their courage by these words that they were ready to die for the laws in their country, he then divided his army into four, putting his brothers Simon, Joseph, and Jonathan in command of one division each, and assigning them 1,500 men apiece. So, yeah, we already heard all about this. Next, he ordered Esdrias to read the holy book aloud and gave them their watchword, Help from God. Then, putting himself at the head of the first division, he attacked Nicanor. With the Almighty for, Almighty for their ally, they slaughtered over 9,000 of the enemy, wounded and crippled the greater part of Nicanor's army, and put them all to flight. What? The money of their prospective purchasers fell into their hands. And how so? After pursuing them for a good while, they turned back since time was pressing. With what? Oh, it was the eve of the Sabbath, and for that reason they did not prolong the pursuit. They collected the enemy's weapons and stripped them of their spoils, and because of the Sabbath even more heartily blessed and praised the Lord, who had saved them and who had chosen that day for the first manifestation of his compassion. When the Sabbath was over, they distributed some of the booty among the victims of the persecution and the widows and orphans. The rest they divided among themselves and their children. They then joined in public supplication, imploring the merciful Lord to be fully reconciled with his servants. Okay. Mm. Again, it's just not giving me enough. All right, you know what? Let's just read. It's in here. Let's just read. We're looking for God's word, not whatever they decided was important to write down or not. And in what way? You know, I don't know. They seem to be lying to. The defeat of Timotheus and Pachytus. They also challenged the forces. Now they're challenging. This means they were on the attack. They also challenged the forces of Timotheus and Pachytus and destroyed over 20,000 of them gaining possession of several high fortresses. They divided their enormous booty into two equal shares. Okay, you, you see that? It doesn't say much about the battle. I and mean, you just, okay, it doesn't say much, much about the battle, but the possessions that they gained, that get, gain, that it, that is gaining a lot of attention. <laughs> I'm just saying. <coughs> 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 like a fairy tale if anybody has read up on the wars and how they work and how devastating they are and even if two armies you know, clash against each other what you're ready right away again to fight two more armies you know what whatever they divided their enormous booty into two equal shares it just doesn't make any sense one for themselves not in the real world the other for the victims of the persecution and the orphans and the widows. Again, not forgetting the age. They carefully collected the enemy's weapons and stored them in suitable places. The rest of the spoils they took to Jerusalem. They killed the tribal chieftain of Timotheus, his staff, on a, an extremely wicked man who had done great harm to the Jews. In the course of their victory celebrations in Jerusalem, they burned the men who had fired the holy gates. With Calistinus, they had taken refuge in one small house. So, the whole army in one small house? What? So, these received a fitting reward for their sacrilege. Okay, maybe they're talking about something here. I'm not getting it. Do I need to blow my nose? Ah, well, anyway. We all have a little bit more to go. Let's see. The Flight and Testimony of Nicanor. The triple-dyed scoundrel Nicanor, who had brought the thousand merchants to buy the Jews, finding himself with the Lord's help, humbled by men he had himself reckoned us of very little account, 
stripped off his robes of state and made his way across country un unaccompanied like a runaway slave, reaching Antioch by a singular stroke of fortune, since his army had been destroyed. Thus the men who had promised the Romans to make good their tribute money by selling the prisoners from Jerusalem bore witness that the Jews had a defender and that they were in consequence invulnerable since they followed the laws which that defender had ordained. Okay, that's it. To me, this is not enough. I can't, what am I going to say? I'm happy. I mean, it sounds like, all right, here we go. You know, at least the Jewish race wasn't eradicated, as was the plan of someone. Oh, then thanks to Judas. <laughs> well, Judas is the one who started it again. Uh, is it ever going to end? Is it? Will it ever end? Has it ever ended? Why not? I'll leave you with that question. Why not? If God is in all of this, so present, makes it possible for just 6,000 or less men to triumph over tens of thousands of men, the enemy, then why is there not, no end to this? Hmm? Why is there no end to wars and all this today, even today? Why? May Heavenly Parent bless and protect you and embrace you with love. And I will talk to you all, God willing, tomorrow.